everybody just had cold right now, but you're here, I'm here, we'll try and soldier through it together. So I'm passing out some paperwork for you, if you could send those back. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is a continuation of modulations. If you can pass these across. Pass those across, please. So we'll be doing some um, recapping of what you learned with um, Dr. Piedantini on this following week, and we're also going to start to do some um, understanding of other kinds of processes of modulation, like chromatic, chromatic modulation, uh, chromatic pivot core modulation, sequential modulation, phrase and direct modulation, and a little bit of abrupt modulation. So getting started, if you can give me kind of a working definition of what we mean by modulation. And when modulation, why it's important, what it is that we use modulation for. Yes, what's your name? Just, uh, Natasha. Natasha, yes. It's just a shift to a different key. Yeah, exactly. So it's a shift of key center. And what is the reason why we use modulation in music? Or some of the reasons? Yes? To provide more variety. Yeah, absolutely. More variety. And it promotes growth within a piece and helps develop it. So it's kind of like the spices of music. So it's like your paprika of music and things of that nature. So excellent. Um, and what typically constitutes a modulation? When we're looking for a change of key center, what, what makes it a modula modulation versus a tonicization or just a brief sojourn into a different key area? Have you discussed that at all? Yeah. Okay, so it's typically about like a phrase length you're looking for, and it's typically you're looking for the progression of like a four, five, one, kind of a complete phrase and a standard progression. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to look at, um, starting with, if you want to look at the page where it says modulation to closely related keys. Closely related keys use the same key signature, but differ by about one accidental. So, Let's, let's get our handy dandy circle of fifths on the board. Okay, so we're starting with C major. Um, one accidental up, so one sharp would be what key signature? G. 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 Okay, wonderful. Two sharps? G. Okay. Three sharps? A. Four sharps? E. Five sharps? E. And six sharps. Wonderful. And going back around this way, one flat. Uh, two flats. E flat. Three flats. E four flats. E five flats. E and six flats. Okay, then we've got our um, our parallel, or excuse me, our relative minors. So let's go ahead and knock those out to C relative of C. A. Relative of G. E. Relative B. of D. E. A. F sharp. F sharp, wonderful. Important to note the sharp. C sharp. C sharp, C -sharp. excellent. G -sharp. G, -sharp. G sharp. G sharp, okay. And then F sharp. D sharp. D sharp. D sharp, D -sharp. D -sharp. yes. Okay, and of course we know that some of these overlap, but we won't get into all that business. And then relative um, minor for F? D. Okay. D flat? G. E flat? C. A flat? F. Okay, excellent. And D flat? B. B flat. Excellent. Okay. So in terms of our, um, what we're looking for in terms of closely related keys, it's one. Um, one accidental difference. So if we had, <coughs> okay. hi, grab a packet there, please. So if we had, can everyone see if I write over here as well? Okay. So if we had C major plus one accidental, we would be seeing what? G. 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 Excellent. G major. And if we went the opposite direction with one flat, we would have F major. F major. And then 
the relative quantities for those affirmations relative? Mm -hmm. Excellent. C's? A minor. And G? Mm -hmm. B minor. Okay, so these are the closely related keys that we would be looking for in terms of modulations, because you can also, these are, the, these are the smoothest keys that you can transition to. Of course, you can transition to keys that are not closely related, but that is something that I imagine you'll be getting into at a later date, so we're just going to focus on closely related keys right now. So you typically only have five closely related keys that you're looking at when you're looking at a modulation. So let's just grab that eraser. And let's do um, the next four exercises that I've got on here. So we've got E major, what is one accidental up from E major? B major, wonderful. One accidental the other way? A major. Excellent. And then those relatives? F sharp for A major, for E major? C sharp. C sharp, excellent. And B? G sharp. G sharp, wonderful. Okay. And we'll just do one more and uh, keeping with time. Well, how about D minor? Got to think a little bit differently now because we're going from minors to minors. So D minor has how many sharps and flats? One. One flat. So if we were going um, one direction up, what minor key would have two flats? G minor. G minor, wonderful. And what key would have zero sharps or flats? A minor, A minor. wonderful. And then their relative majors, please. C major. C major for A. modulations occur into. So let's take a look at our first handy dandy example. Um, <clears throat> looking at the Okay, so looking at this excerpt of music, we've got um, a key signature which could indicate which keys, what are our possible keys for this particular piece. What are the options? A major and B minor. A major or F sharp minor, wonderful. Okay, so taking a look at the chord structures with what's going on, what is the best candidate? Would it be A major or F minor? A major. And why would you say that? Good one, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it starts with an A major chord, it starts on a one chord. So taking a look though, we notice something a little strange happening right around this area right here, correct? We've got a new accidental. So that kind of signifies to us when we're looking at modulations that if we get a new accidental, chances are we may not be in the same key anymore. But of course, you know, we need to decide whether or not it's like your secondary dominant chord um, or something of that nature. So let's go ahead through this piece and put down some Roman numerals. So, you already stated that we've got a one chord here. What is our next chord, please? Six, six. six, six. Wonderful. It's not a first conversion, six chord. And the following chord? Two, six, five. Wonderful. And the next chord? Five, seven. Excellent. So now this is where we have to start paying attention because we're getting near our possible modulation point. So the first chord of the second measure, please. One. One. Excellent. And how about the second chord? Six. Six, six again. Wonderful. And can we continue um, addressing this piece in A major after this point? No. No, exactly. So what key does it look like we're moving into in terms of the five closely related keys that we can look at. We've got, um, we can just kind of take it <laughs> from here. E major. So we have any of these, it could be, you guys think it's E major? Mm -hmm. You guys are good at this, 
we had a pivot chords and everything already. Okay, so if we were to analyze this key before the before the one with the new accidental, what would the second um, second chord in the second measure be in E major? Excellent. And then our first chord of the new key, please. And the next chord? One. We've got it um, yeah, after G. One. Short E, G sharp, E sharp. E, G sharp, E. The next chord? Excellent. And the following? Two six. Two six, excellent. And the penultimate? Five seven. Five seven. And we end on a nice cadence here. So this pretty much means this pretty much exemplifies a very good modulatory progression. If you notice, the, the progression in A is almost identical to the progression in E. So we've got E major being presented in almost a full phrase length. And we also have a nice predominant dominant cadence. So that's a really good example. You guys are really good on this. That's wonderful. And of course, we're using the diatonic pivot chords, which you have discussed previously. All right, so let's move on to example number two. And we'll go through this one just a little bit quicker. So looking at the key signature for this at the beginning of the piece, we have the options of F major or C minor. And what do we have for this piece at the beginning? F major. Excellent. And where does it look like things get a little things get a little interesting? Fourth beat of second measure. Fourth beat of second measure. Absolutely wonderful. So we'll put a little asterisk over here just so we. Keep an eye on that when we do come to do the um, do the analysis of it. All right, so we've got a one to start off with. Who can tell me what the next chord is? Of oh, awesome! I thought this was going to take us some time, but you guys are clever. And of course, if you did, everyone see how we got the five, four, two, oh, four. It's easy to do if you're, if obviously this chord does not belong predominantly to F major. And if you, if you can't figure out by looking at this one, you can always look at the chord following it because that will give you your answer. It's a four, six for the next chord. And then what is the final chord of this measure? Five, seven. Five, seven. You guys mentioned that starting here is where we've got a new key. So taking our F major, um, let's see. So we have this area of the circle to look at. These are our five possible closely related keys that we can move to. And what does this look like it's moving to? D minor. D minor, excellent. And why is that? C yes, the C sharp is the leading tone for D minor. Okay, so let's start with um, the second measure, excuse me, the second beat of the second measure. What chord do we have here? Major six, excellent. And then our first official new chord of the new key is? Five seven. Followed by? And then, and then we have. Do you do you use um, cadential six four as a one six four? Okay. <laughs> and then we've got a one six four five one. So again, we've got almost a complete phrase length in our new modulating key. We've got a nice predominant dominant tonic, nice cadence rounding everything off. So, excellent. All right. So, moving on to the next page, we're going to start looking at some thematic modulation. This is um, the main uh, modulating procedure is an ascending linear chromatic motion in at least one voice, which normally introduces the leading tone of the new key. And or the pivot chord is not diatonic in both keys. It is frequently a secondary dominant 
or diminished seventh chord in the first key while being, while being the diatonic dominant or diminished seventh chord in the new key. And that's kind of a lot of verbiage, but we'll do an example and it should become pretty clear. So let's take a listen to J.S. Bach here. And if you want to just um, listen to it once and kind of get a feel for where the, air, the key area changes, and then we'll listen to it a second time so you can get better familiarity. So it's a small section, so we'll listen to it twice. So now let's take a look at it and listen to it one more time and then we'll go over what happened here. You can hear it very faintly. So where does our modulation occur? Second measure. Second measure? In this area? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do we, what are we changing to? F major. F major, wonderful. Yeah, we're getting rid of the E flat, so it's making it F major now. And we continue along with F major until what new section? Second measure of second system, wonderful. And what, considering the um, the five areas that we could go to, what is this piece moving to at this point in time? G major, almost G minor. So with the introdu the introduction of this of the leading tone in G minor. So this is what this. This kind of means the main modulating procedure is an ascending linear chromatic motion. So we do have ascending linear chromatic motion and it introduces the leading tone here. It's actually in both voices. So this is considered um, a chromatic pivot point. So let's take a look at what the, um, let me just erase it here. Let's take a look at what these chords are that's going into this. So we've got a, a one chord in F here, and then this chord is still considered part of F major. What is it in terms of F major with this F sharp, D, um, A, and C? A 
is in first inversion, because we're starting with the F sharp, where we've got a D, F sharp, A, and C, which is what in the key of F? Okay, this is actually a secondary dominant chord. So, sorry, surprise. So, um, but you're absolutely right. Um, but since it's a dominant chord, it's a D, F sharp, A, C, so it's a, um, a dominant chord in what key? Yes, what is your name, please? Connor. Connor, wonderful. So this is considered the chromatic pivot point. So that's five, six, five, with two. And then, as we stated before, we're moving into G minor, and then this just becomes <coughs> five, six, five, because G minor is <coughs> the second of F major. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at Example number four, this is another example of uh, chromatic pivot point modulation. So starting with this piece, we start in what key is pretty, pretty clear here? C, 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 C are everyone's favorite. Yeah. All right. All right, so, and then where does it look like we've got a possible modulation occurring? Mm -hmm. so, so, last and the last one. Lash measure, possibly somewhere around here. But let's go ahead and put down some uh, Roman numerals and see where we run into trouble. So we've got, I'll do the first one for you. We've got a one chord here, followed by. Two seven. It is a two seven chord, but is it in first inversion? Yes, wonderful. And then our next chord. One six four, excellent. Moving into five seven. five seven, wonderful. And one. one, great. Can we continue in C major here? Uh, it is a secondary dominant. Connor, can you tell me what the secondary dominant is? You can tell me the chord quality first. It is a dominant chord in a first inversion of two. Wonderful. And then can we analyze this chord in C major? Does it make sense in terms of a progression, a standard progression? Yes. And what would that be? Two. Okay. And how about here? Go back where? Uh, to the 5, 6, 5, 2 and make that in D minor. Yes, ma'am. So there is our other chromatic pivot point for modulation. So, and what is your name, please? Hannah. Hannah. As Hannah mentioned, we've got now in D minor. And so the, the 5, 6, 5, 2 becomes just the 5, 6, 5 in D minor. And then we can fully analyze the rest of the piece in D minor. So moving on, we've got where our two chord is one. here. We've got a one, excellent. Followed by six. six. Followed by a nice four, five, seven, one. Beautiful. Okay, does anyone have any questions on chromatic chromatic modulation, chromatic pivot point? It's it's fairly Fairly simple once you see it, once you see the secondary dominant, once you notice the leading tone, because as you can see here, we have again the presentation of the C sharp leading us to our D. All right. Another um, example of um, chromatic pivot point modulation. So you can work on that at home on your own so you can practice some more secondary dominance. Um, so let's move to sequential modulation. And who can tell me what a sequence is? Come. I'm 
sorry. Connor. Connor, I apologize. Um, it's moving, be moving along in a series of keys as opposed to moving once over. Well, sequence is just using the same motion over in maybe a different place. Yeah, exactly. So a sequence is kind of the same motive or theme that is repeated and as Connor. Yeah. And as Connor stated, it's um, you know, the sequential modulation is taking that piece of material and moving it through various keys. And the circle of fifths is very wonderful for modulating in a sequential fashion because you can pretty much just modulate until the cows come home, and it just depends on where you want to stop the circle of fifths. So let's take a look at example number six, which is another piece by Bach. And again, we'll just listen to it for the first time so you can kind of get an ear for it. And um, then you can listen to it again and we'll, we'll discuss where the actual change occurs. And of course, since we're listening for sequences, be sure to listen for the thematic material for this piece. So did anyone hear this as being a leading tone to anything or as a dominant? Yes, wonderful. And when do we actually get the E? We get the E way over here, but we are moving to E minor here. And um, this piece is in B minor initial, like the whole, the whole piece, this is just an excerpt of the piece. The whole piece is in B minor, so we've got, um, so F minor, when we start off with, is a four, and then we're moving to E minor, which is the five of B minor. This is kind of a long range goal, so stick with me here. And then, all right, so we've got um, the cadence here, 
And then we're presented with some new material. We have some new sharks. What key does it look like we're going into here? Considering we've got the sequence that does all this and has the cadence here, we can kind of assume that this is our leading tone and then this is our cadence here. So what does it look like we've got for this particular section? Oh, is that F sharp? F sharp, minor or major? hands for F sharp minor, major, and why would you say major, please? Um, if you look at the, or, measure 28, mm -hmm. um, there's an A sharp, which would make the last chord a major one, because it's F sharp, A sharp. Uh -huh. Wonderful, thank you. But you're, you're both absolutely right, it's hard to kind of distinguish the F sharp major to F sharp minor, especially when you've got all these non-chord tones. And I know that we're going through this very fast, but you're doing very wonderfully. So it's F minor or F sharp major? It's, I'm sorry, it's F sharp major. And then we don't, we stay in that for a little while. Do example seven. This will be another example of sequential modulation. signature of, um, of what possibilities could we have for this particular piece starting. Okay, sure. Take a look at our D flat here too. So what, what could that bring us up to? Yeah, so with the inclusion of this D flat we're looking now at F minor. So we start out with a five chord here, and then the sequence ends here with a one chord. Um, Yes, and then we're continuing with F minor throughout here. Where do we start to see a change in terms of where we can see a modulation being possible? In the third bar of the second natural. Yeah, around, around the third bar of I mean, the second the, system here. Um, we're getting some new chromatic information here. So considering our circle of fifths again with the F minor, we have this chunk that seems like it would be what we're looking at. So do we see, in terms of the new, um, the new accidentals, which one of these would be the most viable for this new section, starting right here? C minor, absolutely. And again, we've got the one chord right here. Perfect. So, um, do you want to hear this one more time to see if you can hear where the sequences start the modulation, or does everyone have this pretty much? Could you hear it okay? Pretty good, sure. Here 
the shift happens. Okay. Okay, so we'll move on now to um, phrase or direct modulation. Okay, phrase, um, a phrase is in a key, and the next phrase is in a different key, which is presented more or less suddenly. So that's, this is probably the easiest for me, or for possibly yourselves, to be able to hear in terms of where the modulation happens, because it just, it just kind of does. So let's, um, let's take a look at this piece, this little snippet, this is a, um, this is a Beethoven piece, and Let's identify um, the phrase first. So let's look at, right, so first let's start with the key and where the first phrase starts and stops. So um, looking at the key signature, what are our most viable options in terms of um, what key this might be in? Or A flat major or F minor, right? Okay, and looking at our initial kind of opening chord area, what, what seems to be the best the best option here for that? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Well, you know what, let's listen to it first and see if um, hearing it can give you the difference between the major and the minor. Even see the difference here, and where, and considering what we've got in terms of um, the sound of it, and in terms of what we've got in terms of the key signature, and what we know from this first phrase, we had our tonic here. It would make sense that our new tonic would also be presented in the same way as the as the following phrase, correct? So, do we? So, what, uh, considering all of that information, what key are we now in? A flat major, wonderful. And then that new phrase is presented suddenly without any kind of diatonic pivot chord or any kind of chromatic pivot chord, or without any kind of circle of fifth leading into it, just kind of starts over again in the following key. Did everyone kind of hear that difference and how it kind of, not jarring per se, because, you know, Beethoven knew what he was doing, so he did a good job. Okay. All right, and I wanted to play um, one more example that's a little bit more modern, that's also an example of um, a phrase or direct modulation. I imagine you all will recognize it. But this is probably one of the most famous key changes in all the pop music, so. <laughs> Or direct modulation. So let's look 
Um, so we've got one more example, and we've got just enough time for it. This is an abrupt modulation. It's very similar to uh, direct or phrase modulation. It, uh, notes here. It's um, when the keys are not closely related to one another or the, or the thematic material that's not related. And you can kind of see, and I apologize because my, um, my sound recording is the actual orchestral version, and this is the um, piano reduction. But if you look at this, we're starting, we're starting in everyone's favorite C major. And what we're expecting to see move is um, to close the closely related keys of C major, which would be these, but what this is from a Brahms piece, one of my favorite symphonies on number four. So what we have here is a lot of a lot of material that is very similar up until right here, right? It's very visually apparent that we have new material and we have new accidentals as well. So we have all this material that's going along and going along that's very similar and then we get this brand new, completely different kind of material and this is actually now an E flat major, which is not one of our closely related keys. So not only is this abrupt in terms of there was no preparation for the modulation, but it's also a brand new chromatic material and it's also um, a brand new key that is not closely related whatsoever. So, and like I said, this, the recording is not as exemplary of what this shows, but visually it's easier to see here, so I'll play it.